Hello, I'm John Fox on Channel Donald West. I am having a trigger happy havoc adventure. Dan Gan Romper. Trigger happy havoc adventure. And uh This guy, he he wants you to know? talk about Oh, what does he want to talk about? Oof. There's a big garden up on the fifth floor. And I found more than one thing to be worried about it. Turn the sound down. What about this stupidly large plant? Monokuma said that was called a Monokuma flower. Even touching it seems dangerous, so we have to be careful. For serious. So I, I tried looking up the uh, why it's showing me the wrong symbols, and it's quite hard to look up stuff because I don't want to be spoiled about Danganronpa, so uh, I couldn't find an answer. It's totally a man-eating plant. I'm pretty sure it's different from the one that lives in the pipe, though. Hey, what do you mean the one that lives in the pipe, though? Anyway, that thing must benefit from the sprinkler system as much as anything else in there. Oh yeah, apparently sprinklers come on every morning. At 7.30 on the dot. Hmm. Yeah, remember that. You don't want to get drenched and catch a cold. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry. They say idiots never catch colds, you know. <laughs> of course not. Because idiots never get wet. Um, I think you're thinking of ducks. Hmm. I'm starting to worry about you, hero. Can you tell me what 10 plus 10 is? What the heck? Hey, come on. You don't have to call me dumb. I may have been held back three times, but that doesn't make me stupid. But if it will make you happy, I'll answer your dumb question. Huh? So what was the question again? Uh. Don't worry, he just answered it. Hmm. Well, I think that's all the new information we have for now. Yo. So what do we do now? Hmm. Well, starting today, you're all under my command. But before we proceed, I need to figure something out. No way. Please, how cocky can you be? You're just gonna burst through the ceiling if your head gets any bigger. Um. So, what is it that you want to figure out? Hmm. Kyoko's identity. Huh? Well... Kyoko is identity, but Kyoko is Kyoko. Is Kyoko, is Kyoko, is Kyoko, right? <laughs> yes, but who is she? The rest of us have a clear, definable reason for having been selected to attend Hope's Peak Academy. Hina's the ultimate swimming pro, Hero is the ultimate clairvoyant. Is he, though? He only gets things right 30% of the time, which is less than guessing. Even Makoto is the ultimate lucky student. More unlucky than lucky these days, but... <laughs> what about Kyoko? Can anyone tell me what she is? Uh, um... Now that you mention it, she never told us! Hmm. Well, Kyoko doesn't really like talking about herself anyway, right? <laughs> it's, it's not the matter of what she likes or doesn't like. This is a matter of trust. Can you trust someone who's so unwilling to reveal their true identity? <laughs> we need to avoid raising any more unnecessary suspicion, so Kyoko, it's time you told us. I can't. Huh? What? Why well, won't you tell us? Wrong. I didn't say I won't. I said I can't. What the heck? What do you mean? So... Because I don't remember. What? I have no memory of what I am. You have no memory, you mean... Huh? Amnesia. What? If I thought you'd have had a sense of humor, I'd say you were joking. But if it's a joke, I'm not laughing. This is very suspicious. You can't be serious about it now, can you? This is coming from somebody with split personality. Whew. I knew you wouldn't believe me. That's why I didn't say anything. However... It doesn't matter. Either way, the truth will make itself clear before we're done. What? So you have no intention of telling us? Then I can no longer stand by and do nothing. Hey. What are you going to do? Torture me? Hmm. Nothing so barbaric as that. It's all clear. I will simply limit your options. I can't allow you to engage in any further suspicious activity. What? Limit my options. Just give up. Give me the key to your room. But if she gives you her room key, huh? she can't go to sleep in her room. She'll be breaking a school regulation. Hmm. And if she doesn't want that, she'll talk. It's easy. All she has to do is tell us about herself. Just hold on. I've read like that. That's fine. Fine. I understand. Hmm. Good. You're finally in the mood for conversation. Without saying a word, Kyoko walked right up to Byakuya and handed her him her key. Held out her room key to him. It can't be! You damned fool! Why do you refuse to talk? Because... Whether I have want to or not, I can't. All I can do is keep telling you that. So, Maybe um... she really did lose her memory. Uh, um... If you really think about it, it doesn't sound totally impossible. This is the worst school ever, right? 
where the only the worst stuff happens, right? Amnesia would fit right in. However, the worst school, where only the worst things happen. What do you mean by that? Huh? Do you really mean that? Sorry. Hey. Can you really be sure that life here has been filled with only the worst things? What do you mean? Perhaps I've said too much. Kyoko turned her back on us and without a word began to walk away. Come on. Where do you think you're going? Goodbye. Don't worry. I'm not going to do anything to harm any of you. Those were her last words as she left. Kyoko's last words. The dining hall was silent. The only sound was the door opening and closing as Kyoko left the room. What the heck? What's her deal? But... I think you went too far, taking her room key like that. <laughs> From her, that wasn't far enough. <gasps> Maybe she just gets <gasps> off on the attention. Can't believe her enjoying getting yelled at. Stop talking. You're getting noisy again, Toko. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, I still can, still can hear you. The sound of your breathing. Or of your heart beating, it grates on me. Hey. Are you telling her to die? I mean, I know how you feel, but... But what's Kyoko gonna do now? Plus, it's si this situation. It's just like before. It's no different from when everyone started accusing Sakura. And I, I'm no different either. I still can't stop anyone. <laughs> what? What? Uh, um... What the hell? Why are you yelling all of a sudden? Because, I mean... Look. What? It's you! How long have you been standing there? I'm very, very... Now I'm really angry! Angry at what? At the thief! That's right! I'm very sad to have to tell you there's a thief in your midst! Huh? What? Hey! My precious! They stole it! Your precious! Your teacher had such faith in you! And this is how you repay me? With betrayal? <sighs> Reality is filled with so much hardship, isn't it? No wonder people run away into their fantasies. Um... But what the heck is your precious? <sighs> Shut up! I hope all of you get stuck in a hiring freeze and die penniless on the streets! What the heck? And he's gone. What the heck was that all about? So, um... He said something about his precious getting stolen. Does anyone have any idea what that might mean? Hmm. It likely has something to do with Kyoko. Huh? Hmm. Who else other than her would be willing to and able to steal something from Monokuma? Did Kyoko really steal something from Monokuma? But if that's true, what was it? And why would she do that? <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is as such, it is officially. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't. Um. Uh oh, we need to get out of here. You know? We can talk about this more tomorrow. And about Kyoko. <laughs> However, after just what happened with Monokuma and Kyoko, I feel like there's something in the air. I would suggest. You take extra precautions tonight. Stay in your rooms. Don't go wandering about. Well... Not like we need you to tell us that. Goodbye. Well then, let's disperse. I'll see you all tomorrow. Following his lead, each of us went back to our rooms. Ah, that's right. I need to put away the knife that I got from Toko. I think the safest place for it will be in my desk drawer. It definitely won't be used in a murder! But anyway, is Kyoko really going to be okay? She can't go into her room. What's she gonna do? Isn't there something I can do? Something I can... Do... As I opened my eyes, I finally realized I'd fallen asleep without realizing it. You realized twice in a sentence there. You realize you've fallen asleep. Not oh, whatever. But more important, did I hear the doorbell? In the drawer, along with the toolkit, is the survival knife. I should probably just leave it where it is. Coco. Hey. 
I'll be waiting for you in the dressing room. See you there. In fact, Kyoko, without acknowledging me, Kyoko disappeared into the depths of the darkened hallway. I know we're not supposed to go out during nighttime, but I just can't not go. The locker, Alter Ego, isn't here anymore. Hey. Sorry for asking you to meet me so late. It's okay, I'm used to it. Correct. Indeed. So then. Well then, let me get straight to the point. It's something it's something you can't talk about in front of the surveillance cameras, right? So does that mean Does this have any, have something to do with whatever you stole from Monokuma? Monokuma told us earlier that someone had stolen something from him. Was it you? Indeed. That's right. So I was right. But what did you steal? So... I stole this. A key. But looking at it, I couldn't tell... I could tell it wasn't just any key. It was shaped like Monokuma. It was probably the only key of its kind on Earth. Where did you get this? So... From the headmaster's room. What? You snuck into the headmaster's room. But wasn't it locked? However... The lock was broken. What? Correct. It was Sakura. Sakura did it for us. She did? Indeed. Remember what she said in her note? I'm not gonna just lay down and die, I will fight you. So Sakura broke into the headmaster's room for us. That's right. So that we could uncover whatever secrets may lay hidden within. She did that for us. She violated the school regulations to help us. She had already decided to die, so her last act was to defy the rules of this place. Indeed. I noticed the room was open after the class trial was over yesterday. But if I just strolled into the room, Monokuma would have noticed right away, which is why I used you as a decoy, which I guessed already. You asked me to meet you at the data center in order to... Correct. I wanted to draw Monokuma's attention. I took that opportunity to sneak into the headmaster's room, and as a result, I found this key. Wow, wowie, wow, wow. We what? Oh, damn it, I don't know. I can't remember the phrase that Monokuma used. Then what you told me about yesterday... Did that come from the headmaster's room too? God Mukuro damn it! Ikusaba. Stop telling me that. Yes, I get it. Mukuro Ikusaba. I guess. No, I can't even name the episode that because it will be relevant later, won't it? This is me going to name the episode. The sixteenth student lying hidden somewhere in this school. No, I'll, I'll call it the. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Did you find out about Mukuro Ikusaba while you were in there? Indeed. I did find a file in the headmaster's room that talked about her, yes. I don't know all the details yet, but one thing I do know is that Mukuro Ikusaba is dangerous. Dangerous? In other words... She may very well be the mastermind. Mastermind? But didn't Alter Ego say the Headmaster was probably the Mastermind? Wrong. No, the Headmaster isn't the Headmastermind. I'm sure of it. What? I don't have proof yet, but I do not doubt that I'm right. To make such a strong statement without proof, that's not like Kyoko at all. But if it wasn't the med Headmaster, does that mean Mokuro Ikusaba could really be the Mastermind? Anyway... Are you? That name. Because you've got amnesia. How do you know you're called Kyoko? You know, the key is the one big opportunity we have waiting to get our hands on. Now that we've grasped it, we can't let it go, can we? Sure, but I mean, what does this key even unlock? So... I don't know yet, which is why... I need you to draw Monokuma's attention again while I go find out. Wait, so you're planning on sneaking back in again? I can't, that's way too dangerous. You want me to draw attention, but we don't actually know there's just one mastermind, right? But there's more than one person watching us. Is that right? But they didn't catch on last night, right? Maybe we just got lucky. Hey. Or maybe the mastermind can't monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. Huh? Like I said, we didn't get caught last night. But as you said, maybe it was pure luck. Which is why we've got to run the experiment one more time. If we're successful again, <laughs> then what may have just been a lucky guess will be proven true. As Kyoko talked... She was calm and collected as ever. I couldn't help but just stand there and listen. Hey. If it's true that the Mastermind can't watch us and control Monokuma at the same time, then there would have to be a period of time where the Mastermind is vulnerable. 
What we need to do is find out for sure if that's actually true and if we can exploit it. Maybe, but no matter what the reward, the risk is just too high. And I think what might happen if we fail... Why is that? I don't think you need to worry about all that much after all. With minimum restrictions, you're free to explore Hope Speak Academy at your discretion. Hmm. No restrictions have been placed on our efforts to solve the mystery. Am I wrong? Even if I took the key, I didn't break any rules as far as I can tell. But if the Mastermind decides to do something, all the rules in the world won't matter. He could just kill us without a second of thought. I see. In that case, even if the plan fails, we'll still be able to prove or disprove that hypothesis. What? Correct. In a moment of crisis, will the Mastermind break their own rules or adhere to them no matter what? In other words... We gain something whether we succeed or not. Now there's no reason not to do it, right? What? If you spend all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. We know the danger, but if that risk means solving the mystery, we have no choice. Hey. Am I wrong? At that moment, I finally realized. I had never seen the slightest hint of fear or despair in Kyoko's eyes. Her gaze was firmly fixed on the mystery ahead. The enemy standing before us. And with that in view... I don't trust you, Kyoko. She just smiled. <laughs> I can't change how I feel. And I wouldn't if I could. And Kyoko took something from her coat pocket and held it out to me. Huh? What's this? It's true. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Open it. Only open it. If something ever happens to me. Okay, now I trust you. Because it looks like you might die. If something happens. However. I'm not planning on dying. But there's always a chance on it of it. A death without meaning is unappealing. Hey. Please. I want you to hold on to it for me. Fine. I'd hold on to it just because you asked me to. But I'm going to give it back at some point. You can be sure of that. Indeed. Yes, of course. Hey. Um, oh, and one more thing. You can't tell anyone else what I've discovered. Sure, because there's a chance the Mastermind might find out, right? Indeed. Well, there's that too. Huh? You mean there's something else? Well... It's nothing. Forget I said anything. I can't just forget that easily. So then... Okay, then. Shall we begin? I still think Hero might be secretly evil, because... We're getting to the point, the game's actually making a point of this, that no one could be that dumb, right? Shall we begin? Right, that, you heard that, right? That was my controller going, No, nope, give up! Makoto. I'm counting on you. I just have to get to Monokuma's attention, right? Well, I'll give it my best shot. Goodbye. I'm going on ahead. The rest is up to you. Do we even get investigation time? Her cut goodbye was no different from any other time. And like any other time, she moved at a brisk pace. She left. That wasn't like every other time. There was a sudden knot I felt in my stomach as I watched her walk away. No, everything's going to be fine. I know it. Because it's Kyoka. Talking to myself helped shake off some of my anxiety. And then I got to work. Okay, let's do this! Hey, Monokuma, you see me? Right, get out of here! I've got a bone to pick with you! Then a few moments later... Monokuma appears! Well, well, this is a surprise! You being the one to call me out... Hey! Hey! Hey, by the way... Huh? Most suspicious. What were you and Kyoko up to? Going to the bathhouse, just the two of you, in the middle of the night? Definitely a hot and steamy moment, wouldn't you say? So warm and wet, so warm, wet and warm, I bet you guys removed to conform with local and international censorship laws all over her, didn't you? <laughs> Not gonna talk, huh? Sure, I get it. That's quite an amusing joke. Obviously, it's, that's in every single version. Well, whatever. Unlike you, I, well, I'm curious, but I'm pretty sure that's in everybody. Unlike you, I have absolutely no interest in late night bath scenes. Because <laughs> I like to maintain a healthy life of observation, far away from X rated exploits. My controller's not working. Never breaks down during Celeste. Which is like an action-packed 
Jabra game. That's that's. Oh, so that's why there's no surveillance in the the, the bathhouse. Oh, screw you, controller. Wish I could just plug it in. I mean, I know I am plugged in, but I wish I'd. This is a wired one. Wow. Bullseye. Or maybe it's because the lens gets all fogged up and you can't see anything anyway. Sounds like sounds like that's the bullseye to me. You need something? Anyway, you went to all that trouble to get me out here. Now, what do you want? Oh well, um, this is something I wanted to confirm with you. Say what? Whether I'm a mademoiselle or a dude fella? Actually, in the Bear Kingdom, there is no male or female. That's not true. I'm just... Um, actually, there is. What? Seriously? My entire um, existence! What am I? This is kind of depressing. That's enough. If I get stuck, I'll get stuck if I think about it too much. So what did you really want to ask me? Oh well, you told us earlier your precious had been stolen. What is this precious of yours? What are you thinking? Listen, I'm sure this is a silly question. No way it's possible and all, but is that seriously what you dragged me out here to ask me? Unbelievable. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be 100 megaton frigging kidding me. You're not gonna ask something useful like how to get the best honey or ursine breeding tips? Why would you have breeding tips? You don't even know if you're male or female. <laughs> this is just crazy. All the pre pu pre teen boys are as nutty as you. What the heck? I... God, you're annoying. Fine, I tell you. It was a key and... That's all. What was that second thing? Yeah. It's a blank, stupid, a secret. Fill it in yourself. Making me trudge all the way out here for that. I'd like to see what's going on in that brain of yours. <laughs> and the next time you summon me for something so stupid... I'll open up that skull and find out! Dropping more than a few swear words, Monokuma stormed off. Phew! I hoped I kept him distracted long enough. Now all I can do is wait and hope Kyoko makes it out okay. No, she'll be fine. It's Kyoko after all. I'm sure she's fine, right? I went back to my room and laid down, doing my best to settle my nerves and get back to sleep. Okay, I didn't think we'd get one of these. Monokuma Theater, brought to you by Spike Junsoft Company Limited. Okay, gonna just move this off. Sakura's Revenge, the game the world's been waiting for. Unfortunately, development's been cancelled. Of course, it's enough people to buy Dangan Romper. Who knows? To buy copies and all your friends. <laughs> it's, um. It said something branch? <laughs> this super stylish, super fashionable game was cancelled during development. I'll start right back up again if Dangan Rumpa sells well. Then you guys have to recommend it to your friends too. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I still have no idea what they're all about. Just a little bit of comedy. There's only one of those left, as far as I can tell. Good morning, everyone. Get ready to greet. My body feels so heavy this morning. It must be because I was up so late last night. Anyway, oh god, I've got work tomorrow. I need to get to, to the dining hall. Okay. 
Okay, Mark's still there. What? You're one minute late, Makoto. How do you explain this? Sorry, I'm not feeling so great today. What's your problem? Do you really think being tired is an excuse like that? Like that? What? Do you really think being tired is like that is is going to work? Like a, t a t No, a tired excuse. I got confused because it's an unintentional pun. Huh? Are you allowed to talk again? Hm. I don't recall giving you permission. <gasps> I just thought... I mean, since the day had passed, uh, it may be reset. Huh? I'm sorry, huh? please don't hate me. Whatever my punishment, I'll accept it. I'll hang a sign for my neck that says, Bad girl, I'll clean your bathroom with my toothbrush. If you stop making disgusting comments like that, maybe I can forgive you. <laughs> Thank you. I won't make any more disgusting comments, I promise. If I do, you can stuff my mouth full of trash. As long as it's you and no one else, I don't mind. Uh, it's no use. She's disgusting to the bone. So, um... Anyway, there's Kyoko. I haven't seen her th this morning. Could it be? Oh, cool. This is worse than being late for lunch. For a date. For your wedding or for anything. Um... Maybe she's mad about what happened yesterday. And she's not going to show up anymore. I can't tell the others why Kyoko might not be here. The best thing to do right now is to keep quiet. Very strange. Whatever her reason, I'm curious to know what she is doing. I know she's not in a room, so... You know? Oh yeah, you still have a key, right? What's this? Ha! Ah, are you looking for Miss Kirigiri? What? What? What do you want now? Hey! Hey! Oh, right, right. You're wondering where Miss Kirigiri is, right? Do you know where she is? Who? Well, it's hard to say. Huh? You don't know either? What? It's because he doesn't know. That's why he's here, to try and prod us for information. Uh-huh. Don't you hate it when you ask someone what their favorite movie is and they name some indie bullcrap? This is very suspicious. I feel like I'm getting whiplashed the way he changes subjects like this. Thank goodness. Looks like Monokuma didn't really notice. So I guess our plan went off just fine last night. Which could mean... Hey. Could she have been right about that? Hey! Hey! So, was I right? You're looking for Miss Kirigiri? Any idea where she might have gone? Hmm. We have no idea. What the heck? And even if we did, we wouldn't tell you. What the heck? For serious. Hmm. I see. <laughs> well, fine. Whatever. I don't even care anymore, sayonara suckers. As soon as he was gone, we glanced around at each other. Hmm. So, what was that just now? Does that mean Monokuma doesn't know where she is either? Hmm. It would seem that way. You know? Where the heck could she have gone? Um... Don't you think we should go all go off, go look for her? Hmm. And how would you suggest we approach that task? Even Monokuma can't seem to locate her. Very suspicious. Yeah. How could he, could he not know where she is? Yeah, totally. So strange. Kyoko must have used the key to sneak into some unknown part of the school. But someone, but somewhere even Monokuma wouldn't notice, where could it be? We spent the rest of the breakfast talking about where Kyoko could have gone. Afterwards we returned to our room. Our room, sorry. Phew! Breakfast didn't help me feel any more upbeat, that's for sure. I feel like this is more than just me staying up late last night. Cool, me time. So, if I look at the report card, obviously Kyoko's missing. So... We actually got something off our way, so I'm not going to talk to her anymore. 
and everyone else is like that, so I should probably talk to the same person twice. Hmm. To the map. Does it actually make sense they're exploring? Um, anyone but her, sadly. What? Did you need something? Should I talk to? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna give him the perfume. That's fine. Fine, I don't mind allowing you to indulge my intention. Hope you appreciate this. Spend some time with Bayakuya. We grew a little closer today. I'll give him a present. Hmm. Blueberry perfume. Normally I would expect something a little nicer, but that's fine. You get an F plus. You pass, but barely. You get the impression you liked it. That's good. Hmm. Listen, Makoto, I want to ask you something. What could Bayakuya want to talk to me about? I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, I'm sure. What's up? Hmm. You know, only a chosen few, perhaps one percent of us, are able to succeed in life. So, in other words, for the other ninety-nine percent, their dreams never come true. Some never even have a dream in the first place. Spending every waking hour toiling to scrap together a meagre living, just barely getting by. What? I just don't understand. Is there any meaning to a life like that? Why are you asking me? <laughs> because you're a part of that 99%, of course. Why did you even feel the need to ask? I knew he was just going to insult me somehow. <laughs> Up until now, I've never been around anyone like that, so I'm interested. So tell me, how does it feel to live a life without hope, without potential, or ambitions, dreams? Come on. I don't have ambition, ambition or dreams. I've never felt that way about myself. I mean, sure, maybe I'll never be as rich as you or anything, but do you have to go around saying that to everyone? Can you only be happy by being better than others? <laughs> Your complaints are as old and tired as a third-rate pop song from any generation. And yet, those are the words of the 99%. That is how you find comfort in your tiny, cold, little world. Stop saying stuff like that. <laughs> Sorry, I can't speak the truth. No matter how much you push and struggle, people like you will never be in a position to change the world. You could all disappear tomorrow, and nothing would change. I'm pretty sure it would. I feel like you'd be farming for your own food, mate. Mate. Stocks don't make any sense if there's no one buying any produce, you pillock. Your existence is of no consequence. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter. Even if you live a totally normal, unimportant life, you can still find happiness in that. If I can live a life that's, that I'm satisfied with, that's all that matters. If I spend my own, my life, my time comparing my life to other people's, I'll never be happy. Sure, you can do that. You are guaranteed success from the day you were born, so... What? Hold it. From the day I was born? You have no idea. <laughs> you don't have a clue what you're talking about. What? What? Those who are chosen from birth of no concept what that truly means. I've gone to battle and emerged victorious. That is why I am chosen. What are you talking about? You're spoiled, all of you. Running away into a world of self-indulgence. Battle, competition, rivalry. You run away from it all. That is why the 99% walk the path they do. Such ignorance. Good God. Your absolute lack of understanding makes me want to weep. After showing a surprising amount of emotion, Byakuya quickly made his exit. What the heck got into him? He was acting totally normal up until... Until I said something about being guaranteed success from the day he was born. I wonder why that set him off. Envious influence! Give yourself a pat on the back. You've earned it. Got a new ability! I couldn't stop thinking about what Byakuya said while I was back in my room. I 
I feel even worse than I did this morning. My body feels like lead and now I'm getting the chills. They're multiplying. This is bad. I think I'm losing control. Also, I think I might be getting sick. I like that they, they, they go, ah, screw the new place. I'm just going to go to the old place. I guess I'll go see the serial killer. Not Shears. She doesn't like Shears. <laughs> Makoto, are you leering at me? What are you thinking? What are you planning on doing to me? Should I talk to Toko while she's acting like this? Yeah, this is the best time. I was perfectly happy spending time by myself. But I guess if you're so desperate for attention, I can hang out for a little bit. I spent some time with the cold and distant Toka. Toka and I grew a little closer today. Yeah, definitely, I'll give her a present. Something creepy. Gothic Lolita fashion model. Okay, well, I know who that's for. Who's Jimmy Decay? Punk. Unending dandelion? Uh, collection of bunches from the Sakura tree. I'll try the unending dandelion. I don't have one. Hmm. I'll try the cherry blossom bouquet. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm already engaged to Master, so I can't go on a date with you. If you're okay with that, I don't mind you if you think about me. Seeing Toko so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy because she's a hopeless romantic. <laughs> sort of. The most hopeless. Hey, I want to talk to you. That's strange. Toko never wants to talk to me. I thought she hated my guts. What's your problem? If you're listening to me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. I wanted to clear something up. I mean, I have to clear it up. What I said before. I don't want to get... When you want, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, okay? What did you say? About not having any love in real life? I don't want you thinking I don't have any experience at all. Even someone like me has gone on a date. Oh, it's true. I'm not lying. I'll tell you all about it if you really want to hear. No, no, it's, it's okay. I was in junior high school and out of nowhere this guy from another class just asked me out. Okay, I guess I'm hearing it anyway. <laughs> he asked me to make plans for a date. I stayed up all night for three days planning it. And what I came up with was... It was our first date, so I wanted to do something traditional. I decided on going to see something. What was it? Are you stupid? When you're talking about traditional date stuff, what do you think it was? A horror movie? On a traditional date? Um, a movie, I guess. Yeah. You plan on going to see a movie? Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool, right? You go and watch it, then afterwards, talk about it all passionately. In other words, it's the ideal first date material. Yeah, because you don't... You're given a subject. Right? So you don't get to talk about politics or religion or anything like that. You're given a pretty firm subject matter. You stayed up for three days and... That's what you came up with. <laughs> Next, I had to... That's the logic, I'm saying. I'm not saying that's a 
that leads to the I'm saying there's a logic behind the movie being a good day. The problem with movies is obviously you can't talk, but that's sort of good as well because you've got like a you're spending time with somebody before you get to really talk about something, and then you're giving a massive subject. So that's there's a logic behind it. Next, I had to decide what to go see. Since we're in junior high, we couldn't go see some kids' movie, right? I wanted something really action-packed. Yeah, a guy would definitely like that kind of thing. And it could get you both pumped up. <laughs> so, we decided to check out the Seijun Suzuki triple feature. Tokyo Drifter, Fighting Elegy, and Branded to Kill. Irresistible for any guy, right? Um, and those are all... You don't know who Seijun Suzuki is. He's world famous for his one-of-a-kind aesthetic, his unique blending of colour. Sorry, the killer's the main character. He gets riled up by the smell of cooking rice. Murder masterpiece. Honestly, I think there's probably not a lot of guys my age who have any idea who he is. You right? I learned that fact the hard way. He must have hated it because he disappeared right in the middle of the first movie. Aww. What, he just left? And after you put all that effort into planning everything out, that's awful. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Besides, I found out it was just a dare anyway. A dare? <laughs> yeah, he lost a bet with his friends so he had to go out on a date with me. And there I was, spending three days coming up with something for us to do. This is really your fault. You made me remember that terrible trauma. My fault? Do you like humiliating me that much? Is that how you get your kicks? I've finally seen the real you. No, I, I can't be around you anymore and your perverted fetish anymore. I'm leaving. Ah, he's burning with hatred. Toku glared at me before storming off. Okay, seriously, now she's gotta hate me. Maximum skill points. Right, I'm going to try and let you go, if the game will let me. I parted ways with Toko and went back to my room. Because I quite like to save. Let me save game. Ugh, I'm getting the chills. I feel kind of dizzy. I can't help it. I need to sleep. Night time wasn't for a while, but I felt like I, my body had reached its limits. So I'd, as I dropped into my bed, I felt like I was falling into a bottomless pit. A pit that has a save point. Just It just lets me save this pit. It's a wonderful pit. I mean, it's a terrible pit. But it just happens to have a save? I was unconscious before I, my head hit the pillow. Oh, I'm going to let you go anyway. Because of the noise. The noise. Well, that's not quite true. I didn't pass out completely. It was more like my consciousness went dim. I moved back and forth in between sleep and wakefulness. Which is, uh, is all to say. I was restless. At some point I found myself wandering through a strange dream. Okay, 